on the story for you. Eleni, thank you for that. Um, as Eleni said, Nigeria's president finally speaking out, saying, quote, many lives have been lost in the protests in the country. But the governor of Lagos State spoke to me uh, just before the weekend and, and appeared to paint a different picture. He said those responsible for violence must be held accountable, but says he himself has not seen evidence of major bloodshed. Have a listen to the conversation that we have. Two dead bodies. That's what we've seen from all the mobs. That's what we've seen going to hospitals. That's what we've seen, you know, as records. What has happened is there's been so many footages that were seen that people have shown, but we've not seen bodies, we've not seen relatives, we've not seen anybody truly coming up to say, indeed, X, Y, Z, I'm a father, I'm a mother to someone, and I cannot find that person. Nobody has turned up, right? I've been to the ground. There is no scratch of blood anywhere there. Who ordered people to be shot? And which branch of security services carried out the shooting? Well, I mean, from the footage that we could see, because there are cameras that are at that facility. Come on, sit down, sit down. It, it seems to me that there will be um, many military uniforms which should be Nigerian um, army or something. So you're saying that it was military officers who ordered peaceful protesters that's, be shot at Lebanon. Yeah, that's what the told is, yes. They were there, that's what the footage, and that's what it shows. Will that CCTV footage at the toll gate be part of the investigation that you have now called for? It will be, certainly it will be, it will. And it's starting on Monday. They're going to be all be available for, for the um, judicial panel to, to review. It will be. Do you commit to a full investigation of what happened on the ground? Absolutely, I do. And will people be held accountable? They certainly would. I mean, we'll do everything to ensure that they are held accountable. We'll do everything. It's a very simple question. Will they be held accountable? Well, I mean, to the extent that I'm not a commander in chief of the armed forces, I mean, I'm the governor of the state, right? The report will be out. We will channel the report to all the relevant authorities in the state to ensure that everyone that is found culpable is accountable for the acts. It's 2017. They've been announcing that the, uh, the, the SARS unit has been disbanded. They announced in 2017, announced in 2018, announced in 2019, now in 2020, they announced again. And they just think we're stupid because you're literally just renaming this unit and expecting us to say, oh yeah, yeah wow, that's great. The SARS, or Special Anti-Robbery Squad, has been described as nothing but a money-making terror squad with no accountability. Random, I've heard it described as vicious, I've heard it described as wholly set on extortion. This criticism will not be new to you, and in the past, the government has promised to scrap the group on a number of occasions. Why should anyone believe the government this time around? The president made a pronouncement and says it's been disbanded. The inspector general of police made a pronouncement that it's been disbanded. Then the protesters, they went forward and said, we want five for five, meaning we have five other things that we want government to do ASAP. Some, yes, we could deal with within days. Some will take fairly longer time, you know, um, a month, two months, three months. What about the disappeared over the years? The what, ma'am? The people who have disappeared at the hands of the special anti-robbery squad. Yeah, so, so that's that's what it is. The people have claimed that, I mean, they, they, their friends or their family members, you know, have been killed. So this judicial panel of inquiry is meant to bring, you know, all of those stories to accountability, you know, where we can make restitution, where the families can come and prove, you know, and identify the officers, you know, that are um, responsible for this. Do you concede to the allegations that SARS is or was a money-making terror squad with no accountability? Well, I mean, those are very strong words, you know, and, and, and I think it's been very unfair to just generalize, you know, everyone like that. I, I think everybody agrees that there's a reform that needs to take place. There's a change that needs to take place. There's some 
truth, you know, that needs to um, come on board. So, I mean, I have been one of the advocates that says, indeed, um, they should, you know, be scrapped. Let us have genuine reforms. Let us have, you know, better, you know, conversation and around how we police our citizens, how we police the state, so that we can have a more enduring citizens for this relationship. If you do not concede to the descriptions that I have seen um, and heard of the group, then how would you describe the special anti-robbery squad? I think it's a group that um, have been ill trained, um, they've been ill motivated, um, they've not um, been fully, you know, equipped with, you know, a standard operating template, you know, for them to know and appreciate the level, you know, of um, their responsibility in our society, and that's why. You know, it, it seems that it just went off the cuff completely. Probably also because they are not being well compensated, remunerated. Everybody that drives a flashy car, maybe they think, I mean, they can stop, you know, from there. Very unfortunately, and it's very condemnable. Is it international pressure that has persuaded you as the governor, the government, the president to, to finally speak out about what is going on and what protesters have been demonstrating for so long in Lagos and in Nigeria. There are no international pressure whatsoever. You know, these are genuine protesters that we all believe, we all acknowledge. I was the only first governor, you know, amongst the time, with due respect to all my other colleagues who all came out to meet with them. I was the first I led from the front. You know, I carried the end South flood, you know, with them. I met with them twice, you know, and we, we all, we all, had the, the rally together, we all walk together. Do you genuinely believe that there will be change as a result of what has happened over the past couple of weeks? I mean, there, there, there seems yeah, no genuine... Honest, I, I, I genuinely... Becky, I, I, I genuinely believe there will be change for two reasons. One, you know, what has happened, especially in Lagos, is, is extremely unimaginable. That's number one. Number two, it was it was a clear call, you know, for all of us in government, you know, especially, you know, understanding and realizing, you know, um, what the youth, uh, what they truly want us to be doing, you know. So it hit all of us like a tunnel boat, and it was just, you know, a wake up call. A clarion call to all of us in government. The Lagos state governor told me reactions to the unrest in Nigeria have been widespread. It, it, it isn't true to say there hasn't been international condemnation of this because there really has. On Sunday, Pope Francis called on his faithful to pray for Nigerians and he is deeply concerned about the violence between police and young protesters. And Formula One driver Lewis Hamilton called police brutality in Nigeria a human rights crisis, posting a photo of himself in a hashtag end SARS t-shirt. Let's get you up to speed on some of the other stories that are. Please subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Subscribe. Share this video. Subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends to subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this channel.